Hello people, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we will be seeing what is LSTM that is long short term memory in deep learning. So before we get into the technical details of what an LSTM is, first we will understand a situation of where this LSTM comes into picture. So uh, take an example of uh, crime scene visualization. So usually uh, when a crime happens or at some particular place, uh, cops have some evidences or they do some forensic and autopsy kind of different things in order to uh, make concrete who the actual uh, person or who the culprit is. So initially uh, when the crime scene uh, or they visualize at uh, that particular place what happens is that uh, they don't get much of the information of how these things happened or what was the cause of this or they try to find some uh, information and they try to dig in some things out of the crime scene place. So as I told like they have some vague uh, idea of what the situation is. So with that vague idea they try to update every day and as and when they get more and more information about the case they have they try to update it and finalize at one particular point of time and they try to investigate with all the proper evidences. So this situation what I told can be mathematically uh, or geometrically represented in this way. Say we have three dimensions. So in the first dimension we have forensics and then you have the evidences and then you have the autopsy. So usually you collect these evidences and uh, go to the forensic lab and then you do some trials then you check and then you get some results and out of this. So let's take this example and let's put into uh, LSTM and see how this mathematically works. So usually in these three uh, cases we want to determine which of the dimension contribute to the most in uh, detecting or in validating the crime scene that you have. So for this purpose essentially what we have is in LSTM we have two types of vectors that is you have CSV that is cell state vector. So cell state vector is uh, used to uh, update the internal memory that we have. So in case like we have vague information we try to update it each and uh, every time so whether it's crime scene or whatever we learn every day so say for example we are learning about programming so in the initial day we have a little bit of idea of what the programming is and uh, let, uh, whether it be python or java we have different syntaxes and so on so uh, we try to learn and unlearn old information and then we try to update it. So the same concept goes here as well. So CSV is the internal vector that is there in our memory. So that same concept is there in LSTM. So that's CSV. And then uh, the other one is called as HSV. So HSV is the hidden state vector. So usually when you want to make a transition from one state to the next. So usually you update the CSV that is cell state vector while going from one state to the next and this updation is done with the help of HSV. So HSV is responsible for updating CSV to make a transition to the next state. So having this thing said, uh, let's make a perpendicular so we can do something like this okay and we take the projections in every dimensions and we have something like this so what hsv majorly does is hsv takes the contribution of each of the dimensions that is this forensics autopsy evidences and it tries to maximize or determine which of the dimension has the most contribution towards the prediction. So in this case what it essentially does is it is given by with the help of magnitudes. In order to compute the magnitudes of this uh, entire state space what we need to have is we need to have a trigger. So why we require a trigger in LSTM? So trigger is basically used to measure which of these uh, state variables in this uh, state space contributes to the most. 
that is whether it's because of evidence that you are getting more information about the crime scene or the whether it's because of the autopsy that you have did or the, whether it's because of the forensics uh, thing that you are getting more of the information so in order to compute the trigger so trigger basically happens from the internal state so what internal state represents in our case is this csv that is cell state vector this green one so with csv also we do the same thing we extend it to other dimension we project these things here okay and we get a trigger so this is what our trigger is okay so now this trigger is used for uh, computing the magnitude of the all elements of the state space so usually this thing is called as state machine now state machine is a vector of different state variables and the state variables are nothing but your dimensions or attributes that you take for the analysis purpose so how do you compute the magnitude of this element so that is simple so magnitude is computed by with the help of sigmoid function so sigmoid you know uh, it's a function that squeezes your input in the range of 0 to 1 it gives in that range so sigmoid is given for all the dimensions say you are taking for first forensics so you have forensics and it's hsv that is hidden state vector and forensics of trigger so for one dimension you compute the sigmoid for hsv as well as this trigger so trigger is caused by csv so you can see both the components that is hsv and csv gets computed here but csv is uh, considered in a different manner that is in form of trigger next with this you have other component as well so with the evidences you have hsv and evidences you have the trigger similarly with the sigmoid you have the autopsy with hsv and autopsy with the trigger so uh, with this you calculate the magnitudes and usually uh, you know sigmoid gives in the range of 0 to 1 okay so for all these computations it gives you a value in the range of 0 to 1 and if it gives you some value like 0 0.09 0 0.5 0 0.1 something like this out of this just for an example and this necessarily is not equal to 1 and you should not consider this as a probability because uh, sigmoid is just in classification or whether that particular dimension contributes to the most or not so this is not a probability so that means it is trying to forget some of the dimension in that particular state say for in this example you have this 0 0.09 so that's a very less value in the classification so that means the results that you get from the forensics does not contribute too much and you should not consider that or you should give more weight in the next subsequent computation so that's what this means and this essentially takes you to something called as forget gate in lstm so now what we have is we need to calculate the forget operation before we feed into the input gate so usually in lstm what we have is we have three main gates so one is called as the forget gate that we'll see now then whatever you compute in forget gate or whatever you want to make the lstm forget in this particular scenario is given to the input gate and then finally to the output gate you get a desired value so uh, like in the previous uh, step what we have done is we calculated the magnitude and we got some values as an example so in forget gate we mainly calculate what is called as wip so this WIP operation is calculated using the forget gate. So WIP stands for work in progress. That means it is working in progress in order to make understand which of the dimension contributes to the most. And based on the values that you get from the previous, it what computes is an element wise multiplication. 
element wise multiplication of all these vectors with the values that you have so that essentially gives you cwip and what this forget operation mainly does is it fixes the relevance of the individual dimensions in the context of the trigger so trigger we know trigger is mainly responsible to make the lstm understand in which uh, dimension or which dimension contributes to the most in visualization of that particular scope so for that thing you need this particular thing and forget gate is responsible for creating the cwip now we'll see a diagram of how the forget gates looks like and yeah so as you can see this is a diagram taken from a very good blog i'll put the link in the description you can check that out so uh, this essentially shows you a forget operation so you can see a diagram here and in this diagram uh, you can see that there is xt so xt is nothing but the trigger or input at current time step so whatever uh, xt is fed into it is given to ht minus 1 so ht minus 1 is the hsv from the previous time step and you have ct minus 1 that is uh, cell state vector from the previous time step now between uh, ht minus 1 and ct you have what is called as a sigmoid operation so whatever computation we have seen here so that happens at this particular point of time so sigma is the element by sigmoid operation on the hsv and input trigger elements giving you what is called as ft and uh, you have ct minus 1 multiplied by ft that is the element wise that is the results on whatever we have discussed now that is cwip so whatever you compute at that point that is the uh, x and which is marked in a red circle those gives you the cwip for this particular state and bf in this particular equation is the bias term associated with the linear equation next we'll look into what an input gate is so next is the input gate that we have so we have this forget gate from the upper step and at the second gate we have the input gate so in the input gate what all operations are there so we must first add the new information that is gained so that we have to update it in the next consequent step so with the trigger that we have learned from the csv we make use of that and to update that csv that represents the updated csv so the old csv we have so we update that with the things that we learned or we things that we unlearned from the forget state uh, forget gate to this step next uh, you don't have any computations too much here but you use the sigmoid operation that is used on the same two inputs the hsv and the trigger that is x and these two are used further to compute the mutual information that is to determine the correlation of the elements that you have so far and is calculated using the tan h operation so tan h is basically used to find the correlation and usually it is uh, in the range of minus 1 to plus 1 and this is done majorly in order to avoid any exploding gradient problem or vanishing gradient problems so we'll look into the diagram of how the operation is so as you can see this is the diagram for the input gate so it is not uh, much different just you have uh, the two inputs that is xt and the hidden state that is getting so xt is the trigger or the input at the current time step and sigmoid is the element wise operation on the hsv and the input trigger so you get the same set of output that is ft and the element wise tan h here uh, that is ht minus 1 and xt extracts the mutual information that trigger and hsv convey now sigmoid multiplied with this tan h decide the quantum of information carry forward element to new cell state vector that is csv uh, that further it computes down in the operation the quantum of information is used to update the csv from cwip to ct through simple vector addition so uh, a quick note on this since updating from cwip to ct is done using element wise using simple addition the magnitudes of the csv vector ct elements can become very large that is at the end 
but this is not a problem however after updating cwip to ct the next step is to use ct to update the uh, hsv that is a hidden state at the output gate so for this yet again the sigmoid output is multiplied and scaled with the update at ct element values so what this essentially does is uh, the purpose of tanets function here is to scale the elements of ct between plus 1 and minus 1 this prevents the hsv element magnitude from becoming large and this mitigates the risk of any vanishing gradient problems during training in the subsequent time step. So this is the reason why we employ tan h at this particular point in uh, input gate. So next we'll look into what an output gate is. So as you can see, this is the output operation uh, at the output gate. So first you update uh, or make use of the updated CT to update the HSV that is HT and elements of the CT can be large so scale them using tanh function so that we have discussed in the uh, input gate and then you use the sigmoid uh, weighted elements and multiply with the tanh of the scaled updated uh, CT to get the updated HSV HT so at every time step one can generate output from HT that is what the line going vertically you can see up of this uh, cell uh, from the updated HT represents. On completion of the processing at a time step, the LSTM cell outputs both the long term memory and short term memory to be consumed by the next step, if any. So, as you can see, the sigmoid and tan H processing as done by the previous gates is done by layers of neurons respectively. The neurons are associated with different weights and thus there will be weight matrices associated with the forget gate or input gate or output gate all these weight matrices help form the gradient vector space and the multi-dimensional vector space in this vector field the states of the system are represented by the state attractors and the transition from one state to the next is represented by the vector field trajectories so, uh, so we have seen all the different gates uh, in LSTM, but LSTM in the recent times are very old. So, usually in today's time, we have what is called as transformers or BERT and some other new technologies that is coming up. But in order to understand the mathematics and functioning of what LSTM or what recurrent neural networks is, you must know this advanced concepts there in uh, different gates and how this updations happens. So well that was all regarding LSTMs in deep learning. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, comment. And if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching this video.